Ning is an attraction, even if he never wanted it this way. The 30-year-old male elephant lives in Chiang Mai, a northern province of Thailand. Here, tourists can ride elephants and admire their acrobatics. Yet, many animal welfare organizations are convinced that young elephants in captivity are subjected to a cruel procedure to make them tame. The management of the elephant camp would rather not talk about whether Ning and his fellow elephants have been tortured in this way. It's early in the morning, just after seven o'clock. Ning is restless. Maybe the bull elephant is waiting for his working day to finally begin. But maybe he just wants to break free of the chain which keeps him tethered to his sleeping area every night. For Sirapat Kamesri, the vet at the camp, there is no cause for concern either way. I think uh, he has a problem because I think uh, the chain was too short than normal. I think uh, last night he will walk around and may, the chain is not uh, freely. And then the chain was look just too short than normal. <laughs> Mr. Soy gets ready for his working day at around half past six every morning too. He lives in this house with his family, barely 50 meters away from Ning's sleeping area. For over 10 years, he's been Ning's mahout, as the Thai people call the handlers of the working elephants. As a mahout, Mr. Soy is responsible for feeding and taking care of Ning, but his chief role is akin to that of a tamer, even if he prefers to see himself as a partner. For me, Ning is like a member of the family. Our relationship is based on love and mutual respect. He's been living with me now for over 10 years, just like you would live with family or a good friend. Ning's day begins with a decent breakfast. An adult elephant eats about 200 kilos of food per day, preferably grass and leaves. While Ning is eating, Mr. Soy takes care of Ning's business from the previous night. He then finally frees the elephant from his twisted shackle. But even during the day, it's a life in chains for all of the 79 elephants in the camp. Ning is obviously used to the routine. Ning does not like being rushed in the early morning. Before the bull hook has to be used, Ning decides to get moving after all. His daily shower awaits. He can always eat his breakfast on the way. It's almost an hour until the first tourists will be sitting on Ning's back. Before they come, he has to go through the elephant wash, as he does every morning. Only a few commands are required for his morning grooming. Ning and Mr. Soy are a close-knit team. After his early scrub, the elephant is saddled up, a daily feat of strength for Mr. Soy. The riding seat alone weighs around 40 kilos. Mr. Soy says that Ning scarcely feels the weight. After all, as an adult bull elephant, Ning weighs about 3.5 tons himself. While Ning and Mr. Soy are making their way to the start of the ride, the first guests are eagerly waiting. As is mostly the case, the visitors are nearly all Chinese. Most Western tour operators have long since removed traditional camps like this one from their catalogs, as many animal welfareists in Europe or the USA consider riding or parading the elephants as cruelty to animals. The camp's marketing officer sees no fault with the traditional concept. We do provide the culture way the way of life about Thai people and elephant. What, how do they? How do we live with the people? We demonstrate the people from the outside how to ride on the elephant. How 
the people use the elephant in the past. In the past, we, we go on the elephant. We use the elephant as transportation. Until deforestation was banned in 1989, elephants in Thailand were also used in forestry. Now they only stack heavy logs to entertain tourists. Around 5,000 elephants in total live in Thailand today, with around 3,000 of them in captivity. Nina Orthman Brask is a Danish biologist. She advises elephant camps on how to combine tourism better with animal welfare. She thinks that in a perfect world, elephants would be free, not held in captivity. But the reality is a different one in Thailand. Now it's about maintaining certain basic standards, at least. Good welfare can easily be done uh, in a riding camp if you provide the elephant with shade, enough food, enough water, enough rest, and, and otherwise free from discomfort also. Ning, whose name means number one in the Thai language, is the star among the elephants in the camp. He has the longest tusks of all the elephants. The camp has been his home for over 20 years. Prior to that, he lived in a mountain village on the border to Myanmar as a working animal. Ning has never known a life in the wild, and he knows what the guests expect of him. A young couple from China gets to ride Ning first. The elephant doesn't seem to mind who sits on his back, as long as he has the right snacks for the journey. The shortest ride lasts almost 30 minutes and costs around 20 euros. Longer rides are also possible. Ning knows the route by heart. In a normal day, he gives five rides. The visitors are usually thrilled. It was pretty wobbly at the beginning, but then it's a pretty good feeling. Some guests are bothered by the bullhook, the most important tool of every mahout. I don't like because he yeah, he take the stick. I don't like. I like all the touch. But the camp manager tells us that in some situations, it takes more than the soft touch to control the elephants. No hook and no chain. In some emergency case, I think it's too dangerous because elephants are the big animals. Imagine when you walk with the dog, some days you need to have leash, right? Even the dog, you need to have something like that. But elephants, they are quite much more bigger than dog, so which means the instrument need to be strong. Lunchtime in the camp. Time for Ning to do what he always does. For Mr. Soy, it's his first meal since breakfast, but he doesn't need 200 kilos of food per day to keep up his strength. Mr. Soy explains how important it is that the elephants have enough food, also to control the animals. When Ning is obstinate and doesn't react to my commands, then I give him something to eat. If he's still in a bad mood, I have to use my ball hook. Just a little peck is usually enough to calm him down. Nina Orthman Brask tells us that a lack of transparency constantly impedes her work. In particular, the camp management refuses to talk to her about the training of young elephants. Historically, they have used a, a very brutal way of training the young elephants to make them listen to their mahouts. Uh, and actually, due to this very brutal training method, uh, that is now what is deterring many tourists from uh, going into tr the more traditional camps, because it is a firm belief that all elephants that do rides, that do shows, that do any sort of entertainment for guests and tourists, uh, can only do so because they have been through this brutal training method. Videos are available on the internet showing the cruelty involving breaking in the elephants, as it is called. It is not known exactly where and when these films were made. The brutal procedure can take up to a month. The animal is only freed once it stops fighting back. This method was practiced for centuries in the entire region. Today, there are laws against cruelty to animals in Thailand, but if no one complains, it seems not to be an issue. Only one more in 
It is unclear to what extent the brutal training methods are still practiced today. The vet at the camp remains vague when asked about the issue. In our camp, we, we try to use the combination of uh, positive and negative reinforcement. Uh, Sometimes they don't know about the negative reinforcement, what it be. Uh, for the negative reinforcement, it's just like we, we add some pressure to them and when elephants do the right thing, we remove the pressure out. A lot of people, they, they think negative is only hit, 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 but in, in fact, it's not that. A nice long drink at the end of the day. After a good seven hours with the riding seat on his back, Ning's working day is over. So just Mr. Soy has to work hard. One of the things I noticed about this particular elephant is kind of very close and almost sort of respectful relationship it had with its handler. Uh, and I think it's all it's all in there, like ma the management of that animal is based on, on a mutual respect and not so much uh, who's, who, who's got a weapon or not. Ning and Mr. Soy are on the way back to the sleeping area. Suddenly, the elephant stops in his tracks. He needs to have a scratch. These concrete pillars are just the thing to relieve his itch. It's one of the few moments when Ning can simply do as he likes, with no drills or commands. Then it's shackle time again. Ning will spend the next 14 hours tethered to this spot. Later on, Mr. Soy will bring him fresh food. And tomorrow, the whole thing will start again.